Hello. Welcome to the next talk. I'm very, very happy to announce Mirko, an old friend. We met in the Typo 3 community like 11 or 12 years ago. And actually, we're trying since March to agree on an appointment for to go out for dinner, um, though we live in the same city in Stuttgart, and we never managed to, and it's quite ironic that we must meet here in Berlin to finally agree on a date. <laughs> but we did so, right? Um, his talk is about how to use Typo 3 and iBeacons to bring location awareness to Typo 3. And if you don't know what that means, just stay here, listen to the talk, and you will know in around 45 minutes. Give him a warm welcome, please. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the very pleasant introduction. And uh, besides that, I'm really happy to be invited today here to the conference. I'm also happy that I managed to make the appointment with Nelson for our dinner. So, um, yeah, like Nelson mentioned, yeah, well, uh, we're using, or I'm, I was introduced to Type 3 a long time ago. We are not, but we are not as encouraged in the community as it maybe should, because, um, like always, I have several points of interesting stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm looking on it and we have several points of interesting stuff we are doing with our company and Type 3 is one part, like using it for content management, but the other big part is Internet of Things. Um, and I'm not sure who of you is, uh, yeah, is getting already in touch with the issues of Internet of Things. Just give me a hand sign. You know what it means, Internet of Things? Yeah, it's like the problem is it's a buzzword, you know, and um, it, it means it can be everything. Um, but on the other side, I was getting in touch with it very early. It's about six years ago where we, where we did the first, the first thing um, regarding um, the idea what will happen if we can connect things to the internet. And um, six years ago, this was a very um, weird idea. Uh, but now, today, it's getting real. And on the conference now, I was on, on, on several talks, and I've got the feeling that the community is looking for something, well, what will be content management in the future? So it's like a self-reflection. And on the other side, if we are working with Internet of Things, I can tell you, uh, today, we have the biggest movement in the Internet ever, 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 which is going on when we connect things to the internet. So this will have a, a really immense impact. And what we are doing with, with our company and our work, we are trying to connect the things together to create um, very special user experiences and applications. And my talk now is about iBeacon and Type of 3. And, I, um, and there are maybe two great um, ideas, and we, I will show you in the talk um, how we connect these great ideas. Uh, another question, who of you knows what is iBeacon? Oh, that's a lot. I think um, a year before um, there will be less people knowing about iBeacon. So, um, but um, knowing about iBeacons means who really knows what is iBeacon? So every, did every, any one of you ever build an iBeacon application or tried iBeacon? Yeah, okay. Good. So first, I will show you, um, I will give you a little introduction to iBeacon and to the concept of iBeacon so that you understand what it means. Uh, first of all, um, iBeacon is a brand built by Apple. And it's, um, it's a brand for a special kind of sensor text. So I, I've, I've brought some of the sensor text here and I choose the red one because the red one are, are the best you can see in the audience. <laughs> and I choose some big ones with also some smaller ones, which can be also be in red, but there are two different kinds of, of beacons. So what it is, uh, first of all, um, iBeacon is a brand of Apple, and it's an idea and, and standard Apple was building, but there are several equal concepts out there um, which are using the same idea. The same idea or the basic idea behind is 
uh, Bluetooth low energy or also other buzzword for it is smart, smart Bluetooth. So, and the concept is very old. It was um, invented by, by a phone company you may remember. It was a Finnish phone company. Okay. Yes, they're now doing, they're now working on tires. So imagine it was invented by a company which is uh, gone and we even don't remember. My, my child even won't, won't remember the company's name. Maybe we remember it. But it's really an old concept. But Apple choose the concept and put it into an Apple environment and everybody of you is talking about it. You know, in 2005, six. If I will ask the audience, who knows about Bluetooth low energy? Nobody of you will maybe just raise their hand. But now it's an Apple issue and everybody knows it. Thanks God to Apple. They are a market driver. So, um, but it's not an Apple idea and there are different ideas out there w with the same concept based on Bluetooth low energy. So for example, um, there is Qualcomm, they are using Gimbal, it's called Gimbal, or you have PayPal who are also using this kind of beacons. And of course you have the Apple eye beacons there. So I told you it was invented by uh, Nokia and it was invented in 2001. Wow, we have now 2014, everybody is talking about it. Um, Apple took it and Apple as, you know, it's kind of Apple policy to get things on the market if they are brilliant, just um, grab them, put them into their own environment and try to protect them um, in a way that they don't use the standard, they create their own standard um, and they did the same on Bluetooth Low Energy and their standard is called iBeacon. And um, there are some things um, which are very important. iBeacon was introduced by Apple with iOS 7. So, and it was something like, Apple didn't announce it very, on, on, a, on a very large audience that they are introducing these services, these Bluetooth low energy services. Uh, now, with um, iOS 8, you get a closer shape of what Apple is maybe try to do with this kind of systems because they now added NFC um, to, to the iPhone. And this means uh, what Apple is doing, they try to, to change your device from a stupid uh, from a stupid device which has only an internet connection to a device which can to go to interaction with your environment. On that case, it can go to interaction with sensors we can place inside or outside, even if it's a beacon or an NFC sensor. The other point is because uh, iBeacon is um, driven by Apple, well, it's more an Apple issue. So you can also run iBeacon application on an Android uh, device, but it's even more harder now to get the full support of the Apple iBeacon standard on an Android device. So if you want to build fancy applications with iBeacon, it's much more easier to do this on an iPhone than on an Android device. So that's the point where I like to talk about the misunderstandings because many people are just, they're reading about beacons and well, that's maybe the next big thing going out there, but um, you need to build beacon application uh, to understand better the abil abilities, what you can do with it. Um, first of all, maybe people are thinking, well, beacons are something like genius Apple stuff. No, it's not. It's, it's called Bluetooth low energy or smart Bluetooth and it's a really, you can buy this kind of sensors basically from Texas Instrument or Nordic, that's the basic chipset behind, and it's a smart Bluetooth chipset, so you can just build, if you want, your own applications, your own standard applications with it. So you are not binded to Apple at all. You can use it um, in many other ways. So, um, other point is with which we are often, you know, here is the fear, well, if we place sensors in a building or on an area, and our mobile device will get into interaction with the sensors, of course, we can track maybe people. Yes, that's right. But tracking people is a question of the application. It's not a question of the sensor itself, because this sensor is quite stupid. A beacon means, like, um, 
on real old-fashioned navigation, uh, a beacon is uh, the signal from a lighthouse, it's just a transmitting signal to one direction. And it's only a signal to the direction to the, to the phone. So there's no response, r no responding um, issue that the phone tries to connect to the beacons and is sending some information to the beacon and the beacon tries to get in communication, direct communication with the phone. That's completely different to NFC. On near field communication, if you, do, if you work with NFC, you will get a, connect a connectivity between your device and the sensor. But a beacon is just a transmitting unit. It's really stupid. So if we try to track people, uh, we need a little bit more than only beacons. We need applications who will track people. And then it's a rather pri pri privacy issues are rather uh, simple because it's just the way how you build an application if you want to track people. It's a question of the application. It's not a question of the beacon itself. Another point we were just, if we get into discuss discussion with our customers is, well, you can track people inside. Yeah, maybe. Uh, well, can you do something like an indoor navigation system? That's often the people are dreaming of indoor navigation. I really, I don't know why, because if I'm inside a building and I always have to watch um, on my device display, it's maybe more dangerous than in wildlife. <laughs> but maybe people are dreaming of them. I, I don't know. It, it must be really complicated to have no um, map of a building inside if you're walking inside a building. Maybe people are thinking so. But that's not a way you can use this technology. You can't build um, indoor navigation maps with the equal use usability or user experience you maybe know from Google, Google Maps or something like that. That's a question of the technology itself because these be beacons are, are working very well, but um, it depends on how far you're away from a beacon. If you are near on a beacon, you can make a very, um, very clear, uh, you get a very clear idea if you're standing in front of a beacon. But if you are far away, you get a kind of um, transmitting failure and uh, we cannot say if you are 40 meters away of a beacon or if you're 30 meters away of a beacon. But we can clearly say if you're standing in front of a beacon. So you can't use that for normally for indoor navigation like the user experience of a Google map, for example. And the next point, um, this was more even a year ago when, when, the t when the theme was rising, people were often talking, well, it's an NFC killer because the iPhone had no NFC on iOS 7. Now we know the iPhone has NFC uh, and it has beacons and that means that Apple is closing a gap um, on the way they want to get with you in location or context awareness. They want to build application um, which will enable apps um, that you can interact with your environment. That's the idea behind it. So if we go to the technical uh, issues of beacons, what we see is this, this kind of beacon range. So this uh, little sensor is sending a signal and the signal is basically its um, ID. So if we know the ID, it's like just imagining like a QR tech, but it's a radio frequency QR tech. So it's sending its ID. And depending on the range where you are located, um, on Apple there are three different ranges. It's called um, immediate, which is maybe like an NFC range up on half a meter. So we can track with the device very clear if you're standing um, in a distance of half a meter in front of a beacon. Then we got a second range, it's called near, and uh, we really know very clear if you're standing up to two meters in front of a beacon. And the last one is far, uh, which Apple said, well, far will be about 30 meters. But the problem is we just know you're standing on a range between two meters and 30 meters away of a beacon. And um, all, all the um, distance between um, it's really very hard to calculate it with one beacon. You need a lot of more beacons to do a very um, exact positioning model and uh, you need them on a very dense grid. So 
that's not really a good issue. It's just the far uh, information is important to know if there are beacons uh, on site or not. So the other point, uh, how does it work at all? It's actually it's in mobile applications. So the question is, uh, well, how do you use Type of Three on it? I, I wish we would later on, but actually it's in it's in mobile applications. So your beacon is sending something. It's like an like a signal transmitting QR code, which is sending its ID. And you have a mobile app or a device which can use Bluetooth. It can be also, for example, a MacBook. And uh, the w device is just receiving the transmitting signal. And you can use an app to identify um, the signal. You identify the ID. And you get an event, for example, if you're standing near or far. Um, in front of a beacon, and you have an event, and with an event, you can do something like that. That's the concept. Um, that's basically the basic Apple concept. If we take this beacon, this beacon is sending a lot of more information. So there is not only uh, a beacon sending its ID and um, the basic um, information to identify a beacon, there is also information on it like the temperature in the room. Um, it's an information about the orientation of the beacon. So we know if something, if someone puts a beacon away and places it to another position, or if someone steals a beacon, which also happens sometimes. Um, and it, there are a lot of more sensor data on this, on this little beacon, which will be sended with the transmitting signal. And we can use it behind the Apple standard just to use this additional information to build fancy applications. So now, how, how is, uh, or regularly, um, if you use this technology, you have to handle um, a solution stack. And now the question is, normally, what parts of the solution stacks do you need to build uh, real context awareness applications out there? Normally, the first part of a solution, solution stack is a beacon. So you need this kind of uh, transmitting sensors. The second part of the solution, solution stack is the mobile application. So you can easily start more easily if you use um, iOS because these beacon services are part of iOS, but you can also use um, Android on that part. So this is the basic setup to build a beacon application. But the problem is um, if you use the sensors on many um, use cases out there, you do not only use one sensor. So if we go, for example, out there and we're building applications for our customers, we have settings where we have 40 or 50 sensors, beacon sensors on a side. So this means, well, um, you will get very rapidly in a situation where you have to manage the sensors and you have managed the way how events and, for example, content will be used on a mobile device depending on which beacon area you are entering or not. So normally, you get very fast in a situation where you need a server-side service. And for example, in this in the example I will show you later on, we are using Type 3. Why? Because it was for rapid agile development the easiest way to build a beacon management system. And um, because the question, we have two questions, what, what we need to manage. First of all, we need something like a repository of beacons. We just know, okay, we have 50 beacons on site. We need a management of sites, but we need to know, okay, which beacons. On the second part, often many of the use cases are, you have a mobile device, you're entering a beacon area, and you have to retrieve data and show content on the mobile device. So on the second part, the second part, uh, important part is not only the management of beacons, it's the content management. So, and we use both um, with Type 3. Now, uh, enough with theory. So the question is, how, how does this look on an application? And um, I can show it to you one sample we did on a with a customer. Um, first I have to put down the the noise. So, well, 
one example, uh, we used beacons with customers. So the idea is it's a machinery company and we just tagged um, the machines of the machinery company with beacons. Why? Because we built a service app application. And on the service app application, there were all information stored you need if you want to run into service on, um, on these machines. And it's really a big amount of documents. It's about 20,000 documents, movies, pictures, all stored on this app. And you get from side of the user experience very fast in a situation where you have a problem, like you know, people have to search uh, the related document for a machine. And this means you need time, you need to be experienced in like abilities to search and retrieve a document. You all know the problem if you use Google, for example. So we use the beacons just uh, on the mobile app to, um, to give a special filter on the search engine of the app. Because if we have a beacon on a machine and you're standing with the app in front of the machine, we exactly know that you are standing in front of a certain machine. So we can use it for the search on the app. So it's just very simple. We just retrieve all documents related to this machine because we know you're standing in front of it. So you don't have to type into the search that you're on a certain machine. We know it from the, from the tech. And that's, you know, people don't need to know that it's iBeacon or something like that. The people who use it, they don't know, just they're happy that they get the right documents and the user interface of the app is just retrieving the documents because they are standing in front of a certain machine and they don't use a QR tag which is not so easy to handle and so on. So it's a very easy fancy application. But on the other side, for this simple, for this simple um, application we showed to you, it was more than 40 beacons on different machines we have to place. So we were using Type 3 um, for two issues. One issue is um, just um, have all beacons registered in type 3 and just um, to edit the conditions of beacons. For example, if a beacon should uh, trigger an event if you stand in front of it or if you are more on a, on a higher distance, for example. On the other side, we give the possibility to shift the documents which are linked with a certain beacon because we have a setup where we just had to change the linkings of beacons and documents during the application. So this is one, one simple example. Um, the next one was um, after, after the conference uh, break, after the lunch, after I was with Nelson discussing about our dinner, I went to the toilet. <coughs> yeah, really, the details are very important of this story. <laughs> Uh, I went to the toilet and um, the hotel had this kind of, you know, we are in Germany, so energy saving is a very important issue. So I don't know if you recognize it. One guy, I don't know if he's in the audience or maybe on another part of the hotel, but one guy got in, a, I think, a little bit troubled situation because he was on the toilet. I don't know what he was doing. Maybe he was sleeping on the toilet. But the energy saving um, of the room says so very clear if there's no movement in the toilet, it will switch off the light. So <laughs> I went to the toilet, the light was going on, and I think the guy was feeling very lucky because maybe he tried to find the toilet paper. Um, but now we are in the question of context awareness. And what is this stuff really about? It's about context awareness. It's what happened to this pure guy. He was sitting on the toilet and well, the lightning system is very stupid. It just tries to recognize if there's a movement in the toilet and then it turns the light on and off. Uh, so maybe the lightning system or this kind of sensors doesn't cover the areas inside the toilet. That's maybe what I suppose because he was sitting inside the toilet and the light was off. So it was dark, completely dark. So that's a really stupid situation. I think so. It would be much better for context awareness if the lightning system knows that I'm in a room. And even for example, for my toilet comfortable situation, I don't want this bright yellow light. I want more of this 
relaxing red light on the toilet. <laughs> okay, so wouldn't it be great if you go to the toilet, you know, the toilet knows, really knows that the, the smart hotel toilet knows that I'm personally, I'm on the toilet and it will shift everything for my comfortable fitting and it will never happen that the light goes off if I'm on the toilet. Just the light will go off if I leave the toilet. So what we need is a system which knows that I'm entering this room and as context and awareness, which will know, for example, what are my preferred settings for an environment, like I like red light. So <coughs> we can show it to you with a showcase and also to put type of three is involved, involved on that. So, no, it's the next one, sorry. So I will show it to you, hopefully, here. So it's an iBeacon connected smart home. So what do we know? Well, what do we need for that? Well, uh, there are some stuff you need. You need this kind of sensor tags. Um, you need a smart lightning system, so we choose this Philips one. You need, of course, the iOS uh, app. You need a lock server, that's type of three in this case. And you need, this is the most expensive part of the system at home. <laughs> so if you stick all the things together, you'll get a situation where you have a beacon placed. You have an app which is tracing the beacon. Oh, if there is an event, it would just send its command to the server. This will go to the client of the smart home and the client of the smart home will connect to the lightning system. So, and this is a very rough demo. We w I just did for that, so we don't mind if it's not so very professional, but this is hacking stuff. So you see now here on the app, we are starting the beacon, the beacon service. Uh, we are entering now a room. Okay, there was uh, something like a message command. The room is in lightning situation blue, and now it turns to red because um, the system recognized that I'm entering the room and my lightning, preferred lightning is red, sorry. <laughs> and it turns, turns the light from blue to red. Uh, it's a very simple demonstration, but it means what, con what location awareness and context awareness means. It means that our environment will just try to get a knowledge about us, which maybe fears people, but on the other side, it will assist us. So a very clear message to the guy who was trapped in the toilet. If Internet of Things will come true and smart homes will come true, you can tell your children about the situation and they will laugh because they will tell you, well, daddy, how can this happen? Because they will live in this full assisted um, environmental world. Okay, so um, some insights behind for the guys uh, who are uh, because I'm on type of free conference, so this is something like it looks behind. So we have um, we're somewhere um, a connector for content, and uh, we have some beacons in re re registration behind. But I think, to be honest, you can do this with every content management system in the world. But we use type of three because it's the best. <laughs> And on the other side, what it does, it's like you have, of course, t type of three is very good because you have a very good back end. And we don't need a front end for the mobile apps, which is a full running HTML front end. What we're doing is we're just sh trying to shift XML data from the content management system to the mobile apps and they get an update about uh, which beacons are in a certain environment and which content is connected to a beacon. And on the other side, we've got a JSON back push to the server, for example, and that's, well, the privacy issue. Um, if you want to use the services for a smart home, for example, of course, we must know that you are entering a room. So that's the point where privacy issues are getting really on a, maybe on a you know, German audience, not an American audience, German audience on a critical, critical issues because the, the server services, of course, uh, will know that you are entering a room and use any different third-party systems who are connected to the type of three systems and trying to get uh, events and then they are pushing 
uh, other parts of a smart home, for example. So, if you want to do something with that, I just introduce it. It's a fancy technology. You will be, if, you, if you're a hacker, you will like it. It's great, and on the other side, we're doing um, nice projects with this stuff. Uh, but not only that Type 3 is one of the best content management ever, 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 it's open source, and we are also open source. Uh, we, we like open source, and now we are handling with Apple iBeacon, and maybe you know Apple is not uh, very well known for their open source uh, movement and contributions. Uh, so keep in mind, if you, if you work with this stuff, it's uh, just a proprietary standard. So, um, and keep in mind that if you, if, you, if, you, if you use this kind of sensors and you're buying the sensors, everybody who's just selling it under the label of iBeacon is just trapped and locked to the um, Apple ecosystem. So maybe something about the future challenges because using Type 3 to manage it was, was one part we were doing now. We are in a state with our customers where we have large rollouts. So we're facing about talking with the customers to, to use beacons, for example, on, on, third, on, on thousand different sites on, on Europe. And now we have a problem, you know, this kind of, this is a really new technology and these are sensors and they are like computing uni units, so they are running a firmware. And uh, maybe a challenge we have to face is how you can run a firmware update on thousand sites with each maybe 40 sensors. Um, this is like it sounds really horrible. It's not so horrible if you are uh, longer in, in, in this area of uh, Internet of Things because this is a, a kind of basic problem in the Internet of Things, how you keep this stuff uh, on track because it's all on distributed side. So what we're doing now with, um, with a project together with the University of Paris is just to find out where we can build a management system, and it's also Type 3 behind it, where we can roll out uh, firmware updates and configuration management on as many sites as possible on in the shortest time as possible, as reliable as possible, which is uh, really huge. So we have this project and we are using um, a, a solution stack which is using uh, raspberries um, as nodes and uh, many of the sensors and uh, type of free in the back end. And for ourselves, we're doing this as an open source uh, because we want that people can use the solution stack and um, we are contributing that. So um, that's my last slide. Uh, in my opinion, so don't go the evil way. That's, uh, and that, that means a lot for us. It means something like, okay, it's iBeacon, it's from Apple, it's something closed on the, on the standard side, but you can build applications which are fancy and where you don't have to lock the user on a certain solution. So uh, using Type 3 for that is, for example, really good. Then uh, what we also think is don't lock the people to, to this kind of closed of an proprietary, proprietary management platforms. Um, it will be great because it's all about uh, interaction and connecting third parties to build this kind of fancy applications. So if the platforms are open and you have open APIs, it will be much, much better to build this kind of applications. Um, the next point is very important, build, build the app, design the app on, on fair use uses. It's like we are talking about this privacy issues and um, this is really an interesting issue. There was um, one week ago uh, in the news that in New York City, about 500 um, phone booths has been equipped with gimbal beacons. Uh, nobody was knowing about that. Um, and, uh, but it's easy to, de to detect a beacon because you can run a scanning software and uh, I've got one, I can just check if there are beacons out there. And someone was recognizing, oh, the phone booth has been equipped with beacons. It was just a question, why? Do they want to trace us? Um, and so the company who was equipping, equipping this uh, phone booth was forced to just uh, replace all beacons because of privacy issue and that in the United States, which was really uh, wondering me. And uh, which comes to the next point that if you are collecting or tracking the data 
uh, for certain services, just do this with permission. So, and this is my, uh, my signal that I'm on the end of the, of the talk. So, yeah, thanks for your attention. And just if you want to get in touch with me and have further questions, let's go for it. <laughs>